Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy. And as it's summer and we've been having some incredibly hot weather recently, I figured it's time for another garden railway video. Now when I did the layout tour for the Pevensey Light Railway a while back, I did allude to some of the improvements I was hoping to make over the summer. Well, I'm pleased to say that I have made a start on some of those, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So, let's head outside and take a look, shall we? So, welcome back to the Pevensey Light Railway. As you can see, the trains are already running with the slate wagon kits I recently built, and they're running behind Cambrai. If you haven't seen the video I did on these, the kits are from PDF models. They're really easy to put together and surprisingly cheap too for a garden railway kit. So definitely check those out if you have your own garden railway or if you just want to have a go at modeling in a larger scale. You've probably also noticed though that at the end of the train is a coach and brake van that you previously haven't seen running on the layout. Now they were sitting in one of the sidings during the layout tour video I did and in that I said they needed to have some minor work before they could be brought back into service and well obviously that has now happened. The more observant amongst you recognise these as the Mamod coaches they sell to go with their live steam engines and because they were intended to run with live steam engines they don't have insulated wheels which basically means when I run track powered locomotives like I do most of the time they just create a short circuit. I was able to get away with having them in the siding in the previous video though by not cleaning the track there so there was enough dirt and grime to stop the current from getting through. But they are two very nice coaches, or rather a coach and a brake van, so I really did want to get them running again. So I ordered some brand new wheel sets and these ones are insulated so they won't create a short circuit. The original wheels were also a bit stiff too and they didn't run very smoothly but these newer ones are actually a much better fit and the coaches now run really nicely. I did also have a problem with these coaches derailing a lot on the first radius points too but that was also solved by changing the wheels as well. The profile of the wheels and the flange is slightly thicker on these newer ones which just helps them navigate the points much better and you can see here they're more than happy running through the passing loop at Pevensey Bay Station. And this is a good opportunity to show off the difference in size between these small coaches and my bogey rolling stock which is obviously much larger so it's nice to have something smaller to run on the layout especially for a mixed train like this. Now, obviously with these being coaches to go with a Mamod Loco, I do actually have one of their live steam locos, which I managed to get working again last year. I know a lot of you have been wanting me to run the Mamod engine on the Garden Railway, and that is definitely something I want to do as well. Unfortunately, even though the live steam engine does now run again, while it was able to make it round a test track, it doesn't quite have enough power yet to run on the actual layout. Now, like I said, I am working towards getting it to run on the layout, and there are some things I can do to increase the power so that it can haul itself and some rolling stock around the layout. I believe there are new upgraded cylinders you can get now for the live steam locos. Whether or not they're compatible with my older loco is something I'm still not sure of, but if they are, then that should increase the power, hopefully. You can also convert them to run on different types of fuel, too. The two most popular, I believe, being a meths burner or a gas burner. I think I probably will try one of these, I just haven't decided which one yet. The gas burner generally seems to get better results according to most people, but it is more expensive. While I would love to make the modifications right now, I do have to take the cost into consideration, especially as I already have my double O gauge layout to finish and other live steam projects on the go too. That said, if you would like to see the Mamod running out here on the PLR in the future, you can help support the channel by becoming a member or getting something from the shop too. If you're interested, there are links in the description for both of those, but that's a quick update on these two coaches and where I am with the Mamod Live Steam Engine as well. Moving on, the main feature of Pevensey Bay Station at the moment is the station building itself, but up until now it's always looked a little bit neglected. 
You'll notice though that I've now painted the walls into a more reddish colour which has brought out the brickwork along with the mortar courses in between. Now because there was already a layer of tan paint on the bricks I've tried to vary how intense the red is which I was hoping would give me some variation in the colour of the bricks. I'm not entirely sure how well it's worked though so I may just go back over this later on and make it more consistent but I definitely do think it looks better than it did before. The doors and the window frames have all been repainted too. Now originally these were brown which I think was a great western colour scheme but I've now done them in green since the Pevensey Light Railway is firmly in the southern region. Plus the green works really well in the garden too and it helps blend it in with the surroundings. It was fiddly work doing these and trying not to spill over the edges, especially into the cream panels on the doors, but again I much prefer it in this colour. I've also done the valances on the end of the building too, these were much easier and again it just ties the whole livery together. Now there is still some work that needs to be done on the building, most notably the roof. While in some ways I quite like the chipped and worn effect, it is just showing the white colour of the resin underneath, so I think it probably will need an entire repaint. Now one big thing I've always wanted to do with this station building is to add lights to it. Initially I thought about taking a feed from the track to power the lights, but that would mean keeping the track power on all night, the building would have to be attached to the track in some way, and honestly I just wanted something a bit more simple. And then I had an idea, because recently we've had some solar panels fitted to the house, as we do get quite a bit of sun here, especially when the weather is very sunny like it is at the moment. And just as a side note, that does mean that the Pevensey Light Railway is currently running on 100% renewable energy. So my idea was to do something very similar for the station building, but just on a much smaller scale. So I got a cheap set of solar panelled fairy lights, which are intended for using outside in the garden. I put the lights inside the building and you can see the solar panel here just beside the track but nicely out of the way. Now the solar panel has been out all day soaking up all of the sunlight but when it gets dark here is what it looks like at night. I think it looks absolutely brilliant, it's exactly what I was expecting and the solar powered lights are working really well. Like I said, the panel charges up during the day and then it has a sensor in it that automatically switches the lights on when it gets dark. And then the lights will stay on either until they run out of power or until it gets light again, at which point the solar panel will begin charging again. Now this is absolutely perfect for my use because it's all automatic. I don't have to remember to switch the lights on or off, it just happens. There's no running cables from the track or the house, it'll still light up even when I'm not running trains and it's renewable energy too so I don't feel like I'm needlessly wasting electricity. This is a good opportunity too to show you what the railway looks like at night. All of my locos do have lights on them but obviously you don't usually get to see them since I'm mostly filming during the day. Now there are links to where I found these solar panel lights down in the description if you have your own garden railway and want to try them out for yourself. They may even possibly work for smaller indoor layouts too, for example you could put a single fairy light inside each building on a 00 gauge layout, you'd probably have to put the solar panel by the window or ideally outside but it's just an idea that I thought I'd share. The one downside to lighting up the building of course is it shows up all the cracks and my dodgy building from when the kit was first put together so I'll probably have to do something about the light bleed in the future. But yes, I thought this was a great little solution to getting the station building to light up and now I definitely want to add even more buildings to the layout. So, two very exciting additions to the railway and there's more to come. But just quickly, you may have noticed that I'm wearing a brand new Pevensey Light Railway shirt, which I'm excited to say is now available in the shop. There's two different versions. This is the large logo version, uh, but if you prefer something a bit more subtle, there is also the small logo version as well. And of course, like my other shirts, they both come in a range of different colors too. I quite like the green one with it being a garden railway of course, but like I said there's plenty to choose from and there's also a mug as well. So yeah, if you enjoy these videos and would like to support the channel so I can keep making them, click the link in the description to get your very own shirt and maybe check out some of the other stuff I've got as well. Now, going back to the railway, one of the things I've always been keen to do with the layout is add some simple infrastructure around the running line that just reinforces the scale. 
Obviously, it's still a model train in a full-scale garden, but there are little things I can do just to create more of a world around the railway. So you may remember in my previous layout update, I talked briefly about the boarding that I was using to create a boundary between the railway ballast and the shingle, and how it wasn't really working. Well, I finally started to remove some of it, and in its place, I'm adding in some fencing. Now, I'm really pleased with this stuff, especially as it's not actually a garden railway product. This is called fairy fencing. I think some people use it for creating like little decorative pieces in their gardens, but it turns out to be a pretty similar scale to the garden railway. As you can see, just putting this along the side of the track in certain key areas has already started to make this feel a bit more scenic and brings the railway scene together. This fencing is really cheap too. I think three meters cost me about seven pounds. And again, there are links in the description for this if you want to try it out for yourself. And because it's designed to be used in the garden anyway, there's no problems with leaving it outdoors. So yeah, this is a really nice addition to the railway. It just makes it feel a bit more like it's supposed to be there rather than the track just being plonked down in a flower bed. Now, I should say it isn't fixed in place permanently yet. I am gonna experiment with some different positions and stuff first, but once I'm happy, I'll probably add some supports to the back, which I'll drive into the ground. This section over by the eastern end of the station, for example, looks great at the moment, but in the future, I would quite like to have a signal box here. The section I like the most though is actually on the curve round into Castle Holt. Now this is one of the smoothest curves on the railway and in my opinion it's one of the best views too as the train comes round the corner. I was initially worried that putting fencing in front of the track would distract from the trains or make them feel cut off but actually I do think it's a nice addition. Even when there's not a train running it draws your eye line and it's just a nice little scene. So yeah, it's really cheap, easy to use and get hold of, and it looks great. What more could I ask for? Like I said earlier, there's a link to this fencing in the description if you want to try it for yourself. And if you know of any other products like this that could also work for garden railways, then do let me know down in the comments. Now though, we've come to the final new addition to the railway. I'm very pleased to say that the Pevensey Light Railway has a brand new loco. So let's go take a look at it. And here it is, the newest loco for the railway. Now this is actually a Playmobil loco that has had some modifications made to it, but it's a really charming little engine. You'll notice it doesn't have any coupling rods or linkage yet. Don't worry, it won't be like that for long as I'm planning to do some further work on this loco myself. So far, I've already managed to install a DCC decoder, which now means I'm able to run it on the layout with my other locos. So let's see what it can do. So yeah, as you can see, it's a really nice runner, and for such a small loco, it really doesn't have any trouble pulling these big coaches around the loud, especially on the tight curves or the slight inclines. And actually, when I put the loco back together again after hardwiring the decoder, I did forget to put some of the weight back in, so I'll have even more pulling power once that's all back in place. So this loco is second hand, and like I said, I'm planning to make even further modifications to it to make the loco look a little less German and more like a British narrow gauge engine. As you might have guessed, that work will centre mostly around the front half of the engine, and I do have some ideas for the boiler and the smoke box door. I'm going to leave the cab pretty much as it is though, as the previous owner had already made some upgrades here, including adding a firebox LED and a red tail lamp. There's also a lamp on the front of the Loco 2, which I am looking to include on the new smoke box. And maybe, maybe if I can, try and get a smoke generator in there too. I haven't wired any of these lights to the decoder yet, but once I start rebuilding the body, I will be able to get the LEDs working as well. For now though, the Loco is just on test to make sure that it works, that the decoder is working as it should do, and it can run round the layout without any issues. And although I haven't started the bodywork modifications yet, it's already a really nice little tank engine, and I think it'll be absolutely great to have a small 040 steam engine running around the line. I'm really looking forward to having a go at rebuilding the boiler and the smoke box, so hopefully I don't mess it up, but I think it should be a fairly simple project. So that's going to be it for today's video. I'm not sure exactly when I'll be able to do another update from the Pevensey Light Railway, but hopefully this new loco will look very different by then. 
If you haven't already, please do subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications too, and maybe consider becoming a member as well. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!